Hello from the Forcetronics YouTube channel, and in this video we're going to be building an RC car. We're going to be using the NRF24L01 transceiver as our wireless communication or control for the car. Now you may have known in the past I've done a couple videos on RC cars using Bluetooth. In this one though I wanted to use the NRF24 because it has a better range than Bluetooth. So I found my cars in the past with Bluetooth the range a little bit limiting so I wanted to use the NRF24. Then to control our car this one we're going to use a glove and so on that glove I'm going to have an accelerometer and the position of your hand is going to control the direction and speed of the car. So let's get started. Okay here's a picture of the car and the glove. You can see I used an old glove. You can see some paint on there. I'll get into the parts, I'll get into the schematic, and then I'll get into a little bit of the code and then we'll see the car in action. So let's look at the parts on the car first. And like I said, this is the same design or similar design that I've used in the past. Uh, I'm going to use the NRF24 transceiver, which is low cost. I have a tutorial out on that if you want to learn more about the basics of the NRF2401, or it's actually the L01. I'm going to use an Arduino Uno. You can't see the Uno because it has a motor shield on top of it in the picture. And the motor shield I got from Adafruit. I like this motor shield because uh, it can control four motors at a time. And this, this car body that I have has four motors. And that brings me to the car. The car kit was a real low cost one. I think I got it for 20 bucks. And I think I got it from DF Robot. I'm pretty sure. A lot of the car or robot kits out there are very expensive. I wanted a cheap one. Now, the one limitation, though, is this is not incredibly fast or incredibly durable. But for just playing around, it's, it's, it's not bad. I have a small breadboard on there. You can see that, that red one. I have a lithium-ion battery pack in there that's going to uh, output about 12.5 volts when it's fully charged. Uh, I have a DC switch, just a simple low-cost one that I got from Radio Shack that I use to you know, route my power, turn it on or off. Uh, notice that the motor shield and the Arduino Uno are actually standing up. That's because I, I actually put a piece of plexiglass in there standing up instead of mounting those to the car. You know, various screws and nuts were used to, to mount the plexiglass. I also used Velcro for the battery. So I put the battery down below between the two body pieces of the car and I saw it moving around a lot, so I just put some Velcro down there and that holds it in place. Here is the schematic for the car. Uh, this is a fairly simplified schematic, but you can see the connections for the NRF24L01. That uses SPI communication. And then the Adafruit motor shield uses I squared C. And you don't worry have to have to worry about wiring that up because it's a shield that just fits right on top of the Arduino Uno. Now, the shield doesn't have uh, easy connections at the top, so you do have to solder the wiring to the uh, NRF24. So in this schematic, I showed directly wired to the Uno. In actuality, I'm, I'm wiring it more to the shield to get the 3.3 volts to get uh, some of the uh, digital pin connections. And then, of course, I have the motor shield being routed to the, the motors on the car. Now here's the glove. Okay, so the glove once again has the same transceiver, the NRF2401. I grabbed an Arduino Pro Mini because it's, it's smaller. I wanted something small. I have the MPU6050 gyroscope and accelerometer. Now this is a nice board. It's fairly low cost. I believe I paid under $5 for it. I'm not using a lot of its functionality. It has a gyroscope and accelerometer. I'm just using the accelerometer and I'm just using the X and Y axis of the accelerometer. So there's actually three accesses for the accelerometer. I'm only using two of them. So if you want, you could get a simpler uh, accelerometer for this. I already had this part, so I used it. Used a small breadboard. Once again, this breadboard had adhesive on the bottom, so I just put it right onto the glove. For the uh, battery power, uh, I used a simple battery pack that I got from uh, Radio Shack. Once again, it was just a couple dollars. You can see a switch on there, so that it already has an on-off switch built on. And this battery pack takes four AAA batteries, which I believe they're 1.5 volts per battery. So that gave me about six volts because the batteries are in series. It actually gives you over six volts. 
which then I plugged into the raw input of the Arduino Pro Mini. Just a note, you probably don't need four AAA batteries. The power consumption of this is actually pretty low. You could probably use something smaller. You could probably just use a nine volt battery if you wanted to. Also, I used Velcro once again to put the battery pack on the glove and, and it seems to have no problem sticking. And then of course I used an old glove. Something to note, on both the glove and the car, I just did simple connections for the NRF24L01. Uh, I don't have it sort of hard connected to the design, and I did that because right now I only have two of those transceivers, and I wanted to be able to take them off to use them for other things. Okay, let's go to the schematic for the glove. Uh, once again, the MPU is going to use I squared C communication like the motor shield, and so I'm going to connect it to pins A4 and A5 of the Pro Mini. And then once again, the NRF24L01 is going to use SPI. So let's take a quick look at the actual design in action and then we'll get into the code. Okay, here we have the car. I'm going to start the video inside of a video. So you can see the glove to the right. If I push the glove down, point my hand down, it moves forward. If I point, if I do it backwards, the car is going to go backwards. And then if I tilt my hand, I can turn it going forward or backwards. So here I'm turning a little bit to the right. I'm backing up. I'm going to go forward. And then you can see a quick stop. There I go back again, forward, quick stop. So very reactive. You can see my girlfriend's feet there. Very reactive to the controls. So let's take a look at the code. Okay, so one thing I'll point out again too is when you're looking at the video, the car's speed is based on the tilt of your hand. So the farther forward I lean my hand, the faster the car will go, the farther back, the farther left, right. You can have the car do a donut by just going left or right. And then if you want it to turn while going forward, you just have to tilt your hand both that way. So the direction is controlled by the tilt of your hand and also the speed by the amount of tilt. So it's a really neat uh, way to control a car. Okay, so here's the code for the control. The libraries you can see, I'm not gonna go too much into the NRF24 code because I have a tutorial on that. Refer to that video if you don't know it, but I call in the libraries for the NRF24. I then call in a library for the MPU6050. Uh, and I also call the library for the I squared C communication. These pins are part of the NRF24 control. I then make an object for my accelerometer gyroscope. I then make my RF24 object. I then specify the address for my RF24 communication. And because I'm so mature, I have it spelled boobies in hex. I then make an, a, a four byte array an array made up of four bytes to send out to the car. And the way this array works is I make a simple communication packet. The 255 is the highest you can go in a byte value and that represents the start of my packet. And then the 254 represents the end of my packet. So I'm just using those two bytes to sort of tell the car when the car receives them that that is the start of the packet and the end of the packet and in between will be the direction and speed data. And I just do that for some extra protection to, to make sure the data is not corrupt. So if, if the car reads a, a byte array and it doesn't have the 255 at the beginning or the 254 at the end, it's just gonna ignore it. Now, the RF24 library already does a lot of this error correction for you if you watch the tutorial video but I just added this as an extra layer of protection. Now what I do in the middle is this first, or I should say the second byte represents forward and backward direction and speed, and the third byte represents right or left direction and speed. And so what I did is I took values from zero to 250, because that can fit into a byte. So that represents 251 states the state 125 represents stop. So 125 forward and backwards means no motion forward or backwards. And 125 
left to right means no motion left to right. Now, if it's from 0 to 24, that means backwards. And so 0 to 24, the higher the value, the faster to go backwards. And then from 126 to 250, that represents forwards. And depending on the value of it, determines the speed forwards. Same for right or left, OK? So that's how I'm going to use the communication or send data to the car. I could do a, a non-byte array, but I chose byte because they're small. I just want the communication packets to be fairly small so they can be easy to communicate and not corrupted. OK, then if we get into the setup code, once again, if you go through my tutorial for the RNRF24, you'll know all these. I initialize my accelerometer object, and then I get into the loop. And notice how simple the loop is. There's not much code here. And this is one of the things that I really liked about using the NRF24. The connection is basically handled by the library. So I could turn the car off, I could turn the glove on or off, and the library handles the, re the reestablishment of the connection. Okay, uh, so here I uh, grab my acceler accelerometer values. You can see I create variables to grab them, X, Y, and Z. I then pass those variables by reference to get them. I don't need the Z one, but I, you know, that's the function, so I grab it. I then create my array, and when I build my array, I'm going to add my start packet and end packet. I then send the array. And you notice you can check if the write fails. You could do some code if it were to fail. I, I don't do anything because even if it fails, it's just going to loop back in five milliseconds and try again. And then what I did is on the car side, if the car doesn't get the communication for so long, it'll just stop moving. Then I get into my functions. I'm not going to go through these individual functions. They're fairly simple and I have comments so you can read about them. The main thing I'm doing in these functions is I'm scaling the values. So the accelerometer basically gives you a value from, seven, from 0 to 1700. And so I need to scale those values to fit in 125 different states because that's what I'm sending across to control back and forward and left and right. So what I do is I just scale those values. And then I also add some leeway because I'm not going to be able to hold my hand completely straight for stop. Here we are at the RC car. And so here I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to go over some of the functions I already did. These first three though, these first three libraries are for the Adafruit Motor Shield. So the I squared C library, which is called Wire, Adafruit's own library, and then a .h file that's inside the library. Uh, you can get this from, from Adafruit uh, and add the library to your Arduino IDE. I then call in some of the same libraries for the NRF24. I'm going to declare my object for the motor. I then am going to create objects for each individual motor. And so it depends how you wire up your motors. So this code, you may have to change these a bit depending on how you wire up your motors to make sure that, that they all correspond to the right one. These variables are for the wireless communication. I then I'm going to make my same array. This is going to be able my same array to receive the packet from the controller. And you can recognize the start byte, end byte, and then the middle ones are the data that's going to do my forward, backwards, left, and right. Here's my communication address. I'm going to do a count variable. So if I don't hear from the controller for a long time, I'm going to shut the car off because I might be out of range and I don't want the car to keep, just keep driving. I then start my motor shield. I then do all my initiation for my wireless communication. I want the motor to start, start in, in the stop position. So that's why you, you see me put motor stop. That's my stop function. Then here's my loop again. And once again, it's pretty simple. I check to see if a packet's available. If it is, I read it. I verify that it's a good packet. I'm going to check to make sure it has a start and end byte. I'm also going to make sure that the middle values are within a range that I expect them to be. Then I'm going to set my motor speeds. It's really setting the motor speeds and directions. I then I'm going to reset my count because I just got a communication. So I just had a communication with the controller. Uh, if my packets failed, I have an else statement where I could do something. Right now, I'm not doing anything because I find that the connection is pretty good. Here, I'm just going to delay for one millisecond. I'm going to up my count. And then if my count gets above 60, which is essentially 
a little more than 60 milliseconds. And I don't hear from the controller, remember the controller just has a five millisecond delay. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the motors and say, you know, I'm, I, it looks like we lost connection. Let's stop the car from moving. Then I have all my functions for setting the motor speed and direction and for verifying the packet. And one thing I'm going to have to do here is, you know, my, my motor direction and speed is represented by 125 different states. I'm going to need to scale that to between 1 and 250, or I should say 0 and 250, to represent the motor speeds, because that's what the motor uses for setting its speed. So I just have to scale those up. Anyway, all this code is commented as well as my uh, the low-level functions to make the motor go forward or backwards. That's all in this code, and you can find it on my blog. Okay, that's all for the NRF24L01 project. Uh, once again, this is a really fun project. You know, using the car, it's almost like the old Nintendo Power Glove. Uh, to using a glove and the accelerometer to control the car. It's pretty easy to implement, pretty low cost. Uh, I'd be interested if you do do this project, if you innovate on it in any way, please share. I think I, I plan to build on this more, and if I build enough, I might do a part two to this project. Once again, if you haven't seen my NRF24L01 transceiver getting started video, here's the title. You can check it out on my YouTube channel. You can also check out my Android remote control car if you're interested. It's similar to this using the position of the phone to control the car based off of Bluetooth communication. If you like what you saw, subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Thank you for watching.